Pops, sponsored by Pennzoil. For more engine miles, Pennzoil works like liquid ball bearings. Welcome back to our New York studios. Pat O'Brien along with Clark Kellogg. And let's show you what happened earlier in your game. Ted Robinson with the call on the broken backboard. Here's how it sounded and looked. Oh, look at him! Oh! Oh! oh. That'll make the highlights on Sports Center, maybe even the E Channel. But the good news is that everybody was okay. It wasn't a dangerous situation. And you know what? It probably spurred Texas Tech on. Since that time, they've gone on a tremendous run. They shoot, they're shooting the three point shot well, and they lead by double digits. And about a half an hour rest out there, and a couple of players had an extra shower to get the fiberglass off them, but everybody's okay. I'm glad about that. Another game going on in Milwaukee right now, Louisville and Villanova. Cardinals up by 11 in the second half. Let's send you out to Jim Nance and Billy Packer. Louisville leading by 11 with the ball. Nine minutes remaining in the game. This is a Louisville team that trailed by seven at one point in the first half on a foul called on Alvin Williams. Boy, he almost came away with a great steal there. It actually hit Sims in the back of the knee. Sims kind of limping a little bit. Williams with a great steal from behind, but did make body contact, just like the block he had just a second ago on Flynn. Eric Ebers checks back in for Villanova. It's been some struggle for him today, only one of nine from the field. He's got Kaiser, a man he should match up very well with defensively. Stansler, three-pointer. Rebound to Kittle. He wants to hurry up. Flynn's ahead of him. Oh, yes, sir. Flynn just stood there waiting for the Kittle's move, and Kittle's couldn't get his shoulder by him. You see it right here. He's waiting. Without question, it was a charge. Flynn just took a gamble to say, he's going have been a crossover when it fallen down. Boy, the Kittles really explodes on that break. That's a, a big uh, event, though, right there, Billy. Down 11, and Villanova comes away empty. 22nd timeout used here by Louisville. Now, Louisville on Friday came back from 12 down with 3.18 remaining. Today, Villanova will have to try to do the same thing against the Cardinals. In the southeast, Cincinnati advancing today with its win over Temple. Second time this year they've beaten Temple, and Conference USA puts one into the Sweet 16 to start off with. And Georgetown, it was... Uh... Okay, we look at the brackets there and see our score. It's 51 to 40 in the second half. We'll keep our eyes and ears on that game for you. There's another game underway in Tempe out of the West. Arizona leading Iowa, 66 to 59. Bill McAdee and Dan Bonner are there. The Wildcats led by 11 at the half. But suddenly, Iowa is right back in. And Jeff Settles, so key for the Iowa Hawkeyes, is on the bench, but McClain hits a three. The lead is back to 10. Warwick knocked away, blocked by Davis. Here comes Garrett. Behind the back, Dickerson finishes. 10 for Dickerson. Fifty-nine Wildcats. As they have done the whole game, Arizona answers the Iowa run. Suddenly, Cox heating up from outside. That's seven now for the 6'10 freshman. Dickerson backs it out. Third foul on Bowen. Warren takes it down the lane, and again, without passing the ball, Davis is able to stand there and get ready, and because of that blocked shot, Arizona gets out running Geary with a nice assist. 
Bill, that's what I was talking about. You've got to be patient on offense because if you force it and it doesn't go in the basket, that's Reggie Geary's dad. He likes very much what he's seen today, but if you force it and you don't make the basket, then that gives Arizona the opportunity to get out and run. Dickerson only one of four from the line today. Makes the second 10-point Arizona lead. You got the and Sweet 16 awaits the winner. Coming up next, it'll be Santa Clara and Kansas. And in the stands, the Broncos look on. Right in the center there is Steve Nash, and we are looking forward to his battle with Jacques Vaughn as you see his numbers in the first round. Coaches sitting together. I think they'll be curious about that outcome. Nash and Vaughn. And they probably have a little more curiosity than even the rest of us do. <laughs> Settles is back in the game now for Iowa. Knocked out by Terry. It's a very aggressive play by Terry. Got to be careful. You don't want, interestingly enough, Terry goes out of the game, but you don't want to create situations where Iowa can score with the clock stop. The next foul is foul number seven. Gets it into Helmers. Warwick it up. That was trailing. Kingsbury take the three. Warwick will take a three. He got it! Knocked away by Davis. Davis uncontested. 15 for Davis. Arizona by 12. Kingsbury. Williams. Two on one. Geary. Hill jam. And Tom Davis has seen enough. He takes the timeout. By 76 to 62 with 602 left in the ball game. Lots of basketball here on CBS. Hope you're enjoying your Sunday St. Patty's Day as we bring you the 1996 NCAA tournament. Stay with us. Pennzoil at the half was sponsored by Pennzoil. For more engine miles, Pennzoil works like liquid ball bearings. Huge shot. Yes. Big play there for Villanova. Mistake by Tick Rogers. Seven point game, 53 46, six minute mark. Kittles with his first points of the second half, right there, Billy. Here's the double team in the corner, well underneath. Over to Rogers. Villanova now stepping up the intensity on defense. Rogers probably remembering that last possession, had an easier shot that time. Kaiser redirects Flynn. Now looks to the basket. Nice double team there by Villanova. Two on the shot clock. Wheat. Wow. Second time, Jim, that it got down to two. Sweet missed the last one. But he buried that one. Yeah, now, second straight trip, but they've done it countless times in this second half. Really using the clock. Dillard has it stripped. Lawson has it blocked, but they say Walker got a piece of the arm. Uh-oh, now here Lawson has got to be careful. A double technical. Lynn gets called for the technical. Lawson, who's really hot today, has got to calm down. Hey, Lawson really has to be careful. Oh, exactly. And uh, not only for... Yeah. For double this, jeopardy's sake. Exactly. For this game and then for the future as well. Now, Lawson will get the shoot two on the foul on his shot inside. Then you've got the double technical. Lawson, with the technical, is now saddled with four That's fouls. Because right. those technicals will count as first. 
big free throws here. And what's happening, Jim, on the other end of the floor, Villanova, in trying to double team, they're getting caught where Louisville is passing the ball to the open man well. Lawson got those two to drop under pressure. And now the technicals, Billy. Eric Evers will shoot the two for Villanova. And looking down the other end, you got to figure it'll be Kaiser going on the line for Louisville. He's their best free throw shooter at 80%. All right, there's a disagreement underneath. Here we see the block by Samaki Walker. And there was Lawson. He kind of gave Flynn just an elbow unintentionally. Flynn stayed right with him, and the official jumped on it. No, it's not going to be. Uh, it's not going to be Kaiser. He's going to put Wheat on the line. Well, Wheat, very matter of factly, knocks the first one down. Well, there's going against percentages. Wheat a 72% free throw shooter. Kaiser an 80% shooter. And of course, we'll see in the next game. Texas has the automatic technical free throw shooter in Randy. Randy. <laughs> I guess that made him 34 out of 36 in his career. I think that's really a good move that Tom Fenders has there. Has the guy that automatically steps up for it. Well, we'll see that in the next game, but in this one, we have five minutes to go. Louisville leading by eight with the ball. Kaiser coming off the screen. Really using the clock. Sims blocked by Lawson, but gets it back. Blocked again. Boy, he's got four fouls on him and still comes up with two big blocks. Shot clock still not reset. Never touched the rim. Five on the shot clock. Kaiser from the corner. Villanova with a break chance. Got the numbers here. Williams bounce pass. Pulls for two. You see what Flynn did? Flynn went over and tried to draw the charge, realizing the numbers were against him. It didn't work out. 58-52. You got Williams on the floor with four. Lawson on the floor with four. 13-point lead at the 12-minute mark is down to six. Little scissors play coming up. <laughs> Denny Crum has Walker and Tick Rogers on the bench right now. And he'll if they score here, he's got to get a timeout, get them back in. So another empty trip for Louisville. Villanova can cut it to three with a three. Over the top. Lawson. And a foul and a great put back by Lawson. He played mean, hasn't he? Yeah, look at Kittle's pass, though. Tough one. Good catch. Three men on him, and he puts it back in there. He took Bozak to the rack, and Smith picks up his fourth. Well, the best thing about... Jason on that one is he had that ball in two hands wasn't about to let anybody take it away from him he's got the Mike Tyson stare on there doesn't he he, wants he it. means all business get it to three he's got the big free throws now and we have the other four minute timeout Lawson with 16 points Villanova's back in it set Three full ones for Louisville and two for Nova. Foul trouble. Smith with four. And Williams and Lawson with four. That's a real concern on the Wildcat side. Jim, remember at about the 12-minute mark, and Louisville in control this ball game, and they started slowing it down. Set play. Samaki Walker with the slam, and he's going to the line for one. Jim, that's exactly the play that Denny Crum set up against Tulsa the other night when they absolutely had to have a basket. Worked to perfection both times. What? Terrific job on the roll-off by Samaki Walker. They really needed that one. Huge basket. Set As play. Villanova had cut a 13-point lead down to three. Now, to finish it off, yes, six-point game with 3.32 on the clock. And here's where Williams has got to stay in this game for both ends of the floor to get the offense moving. Nice defense by Weed on him. He had a nice backdoor angle. Over the top, Watson lays it in. 
I tell you, just get it to Lawson. He's going to find a way to make sure that ball is uh, securely held in his hands. He is the one player from Villanova that really had intensity when they were way down. 61-57. The six leading the three in the Midwest. And the winner advances to Minneapolis. Louisville has been patient now for 11 minutes. And sometimes you sit on it a little bit too long. They're going to get this thing down in the clock, but they've got to make these in the last second. Four on the shot clock. Sims, a weak charge call. Charge call on the drive against Sims. What happens, Jim? If you're going to play the clock like this, and it's going to get down there, they hit two big threes right at the buzzer. The last one by Dewan Wheat, but if you do that, you end up normally, uh, percentage-wise, with bad shots. And that's what's happening to Louisville right now. They might want to start striking a little quicker. Oh, Lawson at the line. And double bonus the rest of the way for Villanova. He'll shoot two. He's been putting on a foul shooting clinic here of late. Lapis screaming to whether he wants to keep that press on or not. Six free throws. Maybe not exactly the full clinic you want, but certainly the results you the result want. Clinic. <laughs> sometimes he kicks up his legs, sometimes he bends backwards. But they're going in. 2.22 to go. Two-point game. Good idea to look down to Walker. Try to pick up that fifth foul on Lawson. Cardinals lead down to two. Turnaround shot by Tick Rogers. And they're back up in front by four. Second time today he's made the turnaround jumper over Eric Evers. That was a la Michael Jordan. You just back that guy down here and then shoot the turnaround jumper. 148 on the clock. Villanova's fought back here late after being down 13 with 12 on the clock. Evers, long, but Lawson's there. Lawson looking for options, and a hold on Wheat will give Williams two at the line. Double bonus. And Jim, in that first half, Villanova, in terms of foul shooting, found themselves in a situation where they just had two. They made one. Now the fouls are really helping them out. They're getting to that line, really making it effective. Here's a man with four fouls of his own at the line. And one of the things you've got to give Louisville a lot of credit for, they have kept the ball out of Kittle's hands. I mean, he's been moving without it, but he just can't get it. Kittle's had 13 in the first half. Five points in the second. And the two is all. That's a three-point Louisville lead with 1.30 remaining. And Denny Crum wants a timeout. He has two remaining. Louisville's 13-point lead down to three. 1.27 on the clock in Milwaukee. Two full timeouts for each team. Louisville leads by three with 1.27 to go. The Cardinals with Dantzler, Sims, Walker, Rogers, and Wheat on the floor. For Villanova, all the starters except for Zephy Pin in there in place of Cornegay. Let's see if they're trying to get that ball down inside to Walker. They are. That too pass. much. Rogers went over the top and led Walker too much. That was an excellent call by Denny Crum, but it wasn't executed properly because it would have put Lawson in a position to have to either lay off or pick up his fifth. Villanova can tie it with the three. Dittles steps in for a two. Yeah, no. Lawson tries to save it, but into the hands of Tick Rogers. Now Villanova's got to pick up quicker. They are not picking up full court. Allowing Louisville just to take time off the clock. 44 seconds to go. 21 second differential on the clock. And look at the box set by Denny Crum out here where Sims will pop out. They go 1 4 out of it. Wheat, one on one on Kittles. Eight away shot. Puts him up five with 26 seconds to go. Against an outstanding defensive defenseman. And Wheat gets it anyway. 
Williams. Stuck. Comes up short. Kittles underneath. Drops it in. 16 seconds. Timeout. 65. 62. Louisville ball with our 16 seconds to go. Louisville ball. During Louisville leading by three with possession. By the way, Nova's only committed eight fouls, so a foul here would give Louisville only a one and one, not a double bonus. But Jim, they can't afford to allow this ball to go all the way down the court on a dribble. So, Kittles. He, he wanted yep. to steal, not the foul. Kittles did not want to foul that quickly. And this is not a guy you necessarily want to put on the line either, but it'll be a one and one for week. Now remember, he shot the two technical fouls and buried them. And made the huge shot with Kittles on him just moments ago that really put Louisville in a great position. Now, what's so important here, Jim? You've got a three-point differential. One shot made here makes it a two-possession game. So really critical there. And I'm surprised that Denny Crum has Walker down under the basket here because you sure don't want any push and foul. We made all of his free throws today, 4 of 4, 15 second half points after being almost invisible the first 20 minutes. A 1 and 1 with 15 seconds remaining. That was a big foul shot right there because now you're on the two possession situation. This one would just be icing on a case. Denny, take. Denny Crum does not want a foul here. You could hear him barking that out all the way across the court. Sure. All he wants his team to do is to play solid defense. Perfect again. Villanova's got to come right down quickly. Go for two. Go for a two here. Williams driving. Blocked by Walker and Wheat at about 7.9 seconds. You go through it two here quickly, and that's what Williams did, but Samaki Walker came over with a great defensive play. Need a quick basket off the inbounds. Lob it inside. No Nelson. Oh. He got fouled. Someone was saying on the floor, no foul, as the ball was being inbounded. But they hack Lawson underneath. 5.9 seconds. It's not a bad foul, though. It's only four on Samaki Walker, so he doesn't have to come out. Then he crumbs going to want a timeout to make sure everybody's on the same page. And Jim, you know what this reminds me of? The intensity that built up for the Louisville match against potentially Kentucky back in 1983. What they called the game of the century in Kentucky. Well, they're on target. Yep. came back for his senior year for one reason, to lead his team to a Final Four. Something spectacular must happen in the final 5.9 seconds to keep that dream alive. Lawson at the line for two. Jim, that was so critical because now Lawson should try to miss this shot. And that's probably what Denny Crum called the timeout for. Try to miss this and get the ball back. Well, he made it. Three-point game, 5.9 seconds. Rogers, Clopper. It's double bonus anyway, so he'll have two at the other end. And that might have been the call on Lawson. The last guy you want, I realize, is only four seconds to go. That is Lawson's fifth foul. He shouldn't have been in a position to commit the foul there. Well, a 75% free throw shooter to the line for two. Jim, on that last situation, what you're trying to do is to keep the game alive if you're Villanova. Lawson should not have tried to make that shot. You know, you miss it, you get the ball back, you take a chance because now you're in a situation, you know you have to foul Louisville and anything that they make still creates a two-possession game. Timeout, Villanova. 4.5 seconds remaining here with Louisville at the line, leading by three. Junior has fouled out. Another year to play at Villanova. 23 points, nine rebounds, and three blocks today. But Tick Rogers, 75% shooter at the line, will shoot two. One could all but seal it. Villanova still alive. Now, Jim, here's what you got to be thinking about if you're Villanova, if you're Louisville. If you miss this shot, they can tie you with a three. You can't let them take a three. Here's the big one. Tick Rogers. Yes. 
Now they can let him take whatever they want. Williams loses control of it. Louisville's on its way to the Sweet 16. Jason Lawson, the man who gave everything out here today, shaking hands. That was about as well an executed game as you could have on the part of the Louisville Cardinals. Barry Kittle's magnificent career at Villanova has come to a close, surprisingly, in the second round. Well, the second Big East team goes out this afternoon, Jim. BC going out earlier. Sanaki Walker, the non-starter off the bench, another big game, and Juan Wheat. Second Terrific half. second half, huh? Unbelievable second half for Wheat. He had 17 in the second half. 22 in the first half the other night. Louisville is headed to Minneapolis. There they're in the bracket awaiting the winner of the Wake Forest Texas game. Kentucky is also already qualified along with Utah for that Minneapolis site. Of course, we had Louisville, Kentucky earlier this year. Kentucky dominated that basketball game as they have so many this year. I'm sure these kids would like to have another chance to face them up. Tell you, Denny Crum was inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame last May, and he has had a Hall of Fame season coaching the Cardinals this year. Well, he really has. We mentioned about Jason Asborn out, Eric Johnson out, Alex Sanders out, and he still takes his team to the Sweet 16. Amazing. There's Louisville, a six seed into the Sweet 16. Only eight turnovers committed today by the Cardinals, tying a season low. And they'll play the winner of the Texas Wake Forest game, which is coming up next here at the Bradley Center. The Juan Wheat is the genuine Chevrolet player of the game from Louisville. And Jason Lawson, with a lot of heart today, gets the nod from Villanova. So more NCAA Blues for the Villanova Wildcats. First round exit last year, second round this season. Louisville advances will continue on the road in just a moment. Still more basketball to come here on CBS and the 1996 NCAA tournament coming up at 455. Santa Clara and Steve Nash against Kansas and Jock Vaughn. That'll be a good one at 455. And then Texas and Wake Forest, the Longhorns and the Demon Deacons at 508 out in the Midwest. Louisville and Villanova, there's a reason why Denny Crum is in the Hall of Fame. He beats Villanova 68 to 64, Clark. Boy, they had an outstanding game, shot the three-point shot extremely well. And after making a strong end of the first half run, they made, they kept Villanova at bay with good three-point shooting. Tenth year anniversary of Louisville's national championship back in 1986. Arizona beat Iowa today, 87 to 73. Iowa's really never really in this game. Arizona got out of the gates quickly, and because Iowa was never able to establish an inside game or beat up the offensive glass, Arizona had a number of baskets in the open court. So Arizona advances, and now in the second half with 7.03 left in the game, North Carolina way down against Texas Tech in a game that was delayed because the backboard was broken, 72-49 to 49 there. And Georgia Tech and Boston College, this is the situation now. We are closing out this game, three minutes and ten seconds left. Georgia Tech. Stephon Marbury and Drew Barry leading 94 to 78. Here's Bill Raftery and Sean McDonough. Georgia Tech by 16. Seemingly comfortably on their way to the Sweet 16 with 310 remaining. Sean McDonough, Bill Raftery here at Orlando Arena. Second round action in the Southeast. And Tech once again today, putting a lot of points on the board. They scored 90 in their opening round win over Austin P. 94 with three minutes to go today. Equal opportunity team. Distribute the basketball. And Keenan Jordan called for a foul. And immediately, Jim O'Brien and Rick Boyajus, his associate head coach, came flying off the bench to protest. It has not been a happy St. Patrick's Day for Coach O'Brien. As we look toward next year, Bill, he has his entire team coming back. No seniors depart. They don't have any. And then you had on what, Costas Maglos, who came in the middle of the year, late December. 
from Greece, a guy they think will be a good basketball player, is Scooney Pence, who is a sophomore. Real good understanding of what is wanted. They get the old cheap timeout now. Jordan fouls out with nine points. Cincinnati defeated Temple earlier today to earn the trip to Lexington in the Sweet 16. And they await the winner of this game in all likelihood Georgia Tech. And that would be a battle of the two seed versus the three. Number one seed has already advanced to Lexington, Connecticut. And the Huskies will play the five seed Mississippi State. So form holding for the most part in the southeast. And BC stepped up a little late in the half. Uh, down 20, started to get organized. The trap, a little full court, a little half court. But I am so impressed with Bobby Crimmins and the ability to pass the ball. And then I get Mississippi State, Cincinnati, and the winner of this one. That action Friday at Rupp Arena. Career high, 29 points now for Stefan Marbury. He also has nine assists in the game. And that's a career high. Well, the Curryman, as Bob said, he's from Bobby Crimmins. A little up in the Irish his way. Nice penetration by Woodard. Curly, elevating. Could slide the Saturday edition of the Daily News under there. Coach Crimmins, proud of his Irish heritage, as he mentioned at the top of today's telecast. And he's joined the Olympic Council of Ireland's Order of the Green Jacket. That's a fundraising organization that raises money to help pay for the training of Irish athletes mm -hmm. in anticipation of the Olympics and some divided loyalty perhaps to Coach Cummins because he's going to be an assistant coach for the USA basketball team this summer in Atlanta, but helping the Irish as well. Woodward stripped by Marbury. Timeout. Oh, Jim O'Brien has to be careful now. He is all over Don Rutledge saying that Woodward was grabbed by Marbury. And a timeout. 20 second variety with 207 left and Georgia Tech leading 96 to 82 Texas and Wake Forest in the on deck circle as are Santa Clara and Kansas now you mentioned Bobby involved with the one of the have people think that he's going to be some, doing some recruiting in Ireland I gave a scholarship to a kid from Ireland years ago and after a couple of practices my assistant said, are you sure you're not related to this kid? It's not the bastion of basketball, although there is a great interest. In the East region today, Georgetown. Overcame early foul trouble from Allen Iverson, beat New Mexico. Texas Tech quieting the doubters as they are putting it on North Carolina. <laughs> They're like the Northwestern football team. They keep winning, but people still keep questioning how good they are. James Dickey, and look at Barry. He finds more people than Theismann, Staubach, Aikman. You name them. In uh, the spirit of that, you could have found an Irish quarterback to throw on the list. Montana, Notre Dame. <laughs> Irish school, at least. Is Joe Irish? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody is today, or they want to be. Well, Daddy used to put it on the platter like Drew. It's infectious. I think he's impacted on this whole team, much like Rick did for Al Adels when they won the NBA championship. Eddie Electric has fouled out. Elisma with 14 points. Four rebounds, six of eight from the floor. Eddie Elisma, the junior from New York City. He's the all-time leading rebounder still at LaSalle High School in the city. You know whose rebounding record he broke at LaSalle? Uh, 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 the YouTube, the uh, yeah. John Candelari. Candelari, sure, the old pirate. Nine major league pitchers. Danny Buckley was the coach. Then Billy Abair was around, now the head coach at LaSalle. Bobby sneaks into New York every once in a while, usually comes out with a pretty sound basketball player. Fouls on Antonio Granger in the backcourt from Boston College. We'll see this season end at 19 and 11 after a nine victory campaign a year ago and picked to finish last in the Big East Six this year. There's Costas Magalos, by the way, right of your screen. A young man from Greece, Mark Bill was speaking earlier. Jim O'Brien thinks he has a lot of potential, but he needs to put in a lot of hard work to become a productive player in this country. And that's the understanding they have to get. They get competitive alongside him, Pat Bosworth, Seton Hall prep kid. <laughs> you are shameless. Near the homeland. 
but the intensity involved to improve your play is what Magnus has to develop. Woodward fouled by Hodge with 126 left. Action out west today, Arizona. Comfortably ahead throughout much of that game. Beat Iowa. Lou Dolphin's current team beating his former team. Out west, Arizona will await the winner of the game coming up in just a few minutes between Santa Clara and Kansas. The number one seed in the west is out. Purdue ousted yesterday. And a lot of people harsh on Purdue in the Big Ten, not feeling up to snuff. I just thought Purdue had a great year with modest talent. And There's no much. question the Big Ten now. Yeah, no, they're not as good as we've known them over the years. You know, Southeastern, another uh, league, people said wasn't that good, and we had the opportunity to do a number of games, and you had to be impressed with the upper echelon, which I think takes place in most leagues. Mm -hmm. well, Kentucky would have been the most impressive-looking team in any league. All right, well, I'm thinking of Mississippi State, Arkansas. And that, I think, everybody else felt because Kentucky annihilated the rest of the conference. Those teams weren't as good. Well, they are good. Kentucky just happens to be great. They sure are. Jim O'Brien and Bobby Crennins getting a chance to empty the benches. And Marbury getting an affectionate hug. And why not? I'd hug him myself. Sensational. Marbury, 29 points, 9 assists, 29 points a career high, 9 assists, ties his career best. No turnovers. He was six out of seven from three-point land, 10 for 12 overall. Pretty good numbers, huh? Not a bad day. Into the game, Brian Brennan. Uh, if that's a familiar name to you people that follow Carolina basketball, it's Pete Brennan's nephew. Brother Vin's child. Of course, the flip side of this game by Marbury for George Tech is every time he has a performance like this, people are going to start up the NBA speculation again. Will he stay? Will mm -hmm. he go? He's put that aside for now. He didn't want to talk about that. I mean, just, no. I just want to play some basketball. That's the right attitude for him to have. One would suspect it's time to deal with those issues later. Right now, the focus is on trying to win an NCAA championship. You notice who's inbounding here, by the way? Your call. Pat Bosworth, mm -hmm. your man from mm -hmm. Seton Hall Prep, which you so uh, subtly slipped in a moment ago. Well, his dad was a uh, great help to us with our program. And local coached our kids in grade school. I guess it's only fitting that on St. Patrick's Day that the county court squad should get in. That's what Bobby Cremins calls them. These are the bench players, walk-ons, and you can look at the names on the floor. Kelly, Murphy, Brennan. <laughs> the practice squad known as the... Don't play shuffleboard against them <laughs> with those names. Georgia Tech, we have conceded them this victory. And they'll meet Cincinnati. And that should be a fun game to watch the finesse and style of Georgia Tech against the brute force of Cincinnati with some finesse thrown in as well. And that's Brennan making a three to the delight of the Georgia Tech fans. He's got more range than his uncle, I know that. Greg Bartoli, a walk-on. Brad Christensen, Mike Piwerka, also into the game for BC. Maglos, count the bucket. Not a bad move, huh? Oh, he'll have a chance for a three-point play as Brennan is whistled for the foul. As Dan Ye looks on, uh, the factor here next year, I think, Maglos has to step up to come, make them bigger, don't you? Yep. Dan Ye be the power forward, which is more of his position, although he can move out and be a three as well. Mm. A flicker. And now they flicker with hope. Kelly underneath the Brennan. Johnny Cork squad did not ring the bell that time. Maglos having the ability to take it to the bucket. Not too bad in the open floor. And this is the pain and agony at this time of year. A couple of days, they'll appreciate what they accomplished, BC. And as you move on, you know, a lot of harmony and great feeling amongst this team. I think defeat is less difficult, though, in this instance when you know that the better team won. And mm -hmm. I think the D.C. players realize that the way this game has gone that Georgia Tech is a superior team. They had to go in with their game plan and control totally the defense. And they didn't. And I get Piwerka gets on the score sheet with an assist to Brad Christensen. 
The Georgia Tech's so unpredictable in that they're free-flowing, they're unselfish, it's tough to guard them. Georgia Tech erasing the bitter memories of exclusion from this tournament the last two years in a first-round defeat three years ago as the Yellow Jackets head for the Sweet 16. Final score 103 to 89. Tech with the victory now 24 and 11. The genuine Chevrolet players of the game. Danny Abrams of Boston College, another double double. And Stefan Marbury, the best game of his career to this point at Georgia Tech. From Phil Raftery, Sean McDonough, so long. Here's Pat O'Brien. All right, Sean, thank you. And so the luck of the Irish is not with Jim O'Brien today in Boston College, but with Georgia Tech and the Yellow Jackets move on to the tournament. They'll play Cincinnati. Coming up next year on CBS, the 10-2 game out in the West, Santa Clara and Kansas. We're going to send you all to that game. Then at 5.08, those of you who are going to see Texas and Wake Forest, we'll send you out there to that game. We'll have all that for you after a message and a word from your local station. Stay with us. <laughs>